Now finally let us find what are the stresses in this cross section ok. Now we are assume that the dimension of this cross section should be the following the cross section is as the following dimensions. To 90 all the dimensions are in mm. So, the first job is to find where the center of this cross section is and the second moment of inertia of this cross section. The center would be y bar we have to find center of the cross section and we have to find i z z about y bar ok. So, let us assume that initially the axis is located at these locations and y. Now, I have to find the CG of this section, I have to move this axis from here to some point y CG to z CG where this is CG of the cross section and let this distance be y bar ok. Then we can see that y bar will be given by area of the bottom area of this bottom flange which will be 300 into 10 the center of this from the assumed origin which the center of this flange from the assumed origin which will be 10 by 2 plus for the web the area is 290 into 10 into the center of the web from the bottom of this flange which will be 290 by 2 plus 10 ok. So, that will be that divided by this divided by the area of the entire cross section 300 into 10 plus 290 into 10 is going to give me 78.73. Okay, that is y bar. Now, to find i z z I use the parallaxis theorem. I find the i z z about the central axis of this flange about which will be 1 by 12 into 300 into 10 cube plus the shift from here to the c g plus the shift from here to the c g of the cross section which would be 300 into 10 into the shift which will be y bar minus 5 the whole square because the C g of this section is at a 5 mm from the bottom of the flange ok. Plus I will have for the web 1 by 12 into 10 into 290 cube plus the area of the web 290 into 10 into the shifting term from the C g of the web which is here ok year to year I have to find this distance this distance would be 290 by 2 plus 10 minus y bar ok 290 plus 2 by 2 plus 10 is this distance is this total distance ok. So, that will be 290 by 2 plus 10 minus y bar the whole square the whole square ok. So, this is going to be 53.53 into 10 power 6 millimeter power 4 ok. Now, now we use the expression sigma x x is m z by i z i z z into y minus y naught to compute the stress at any location ok. So, basically 
how will the strain vary in this cross section all epsilon x x vary epsilon x x varies as d square delta y by d x square into e times i z z. This variation is given by minus y minus y naught d square delta y by d x square this is a constant. So, basically it is going to vary linearly with respect to y. So, the strain variation is going to be linear like this okay. Okay. This is a strain variation similarly the stress sigma x x would vary as m z by i z z into y minus y naught okay that variation is also going to be linear with a negative sign in here negative sign in here okay so that is going to be compression at the top and tension at the bottom something like that okay so we are interested in finding what is this maximum compressive stress that will come here and what will be the maximum tensile stress that comes in here okay so basically i am interested in finding this stress sigma x x c max and I am interested in finding this stress which is sigma x x in tension maximum and that has to be limited to what are limiting value we had before ok. So, sigma x x compression maximum was assumed to be 80 MPa this is mg which is P L by 3 that is the maximum moment P L by 3 into y minus y naught is I have to get this distance this distance is y c which is 300 minus y bar because this distance is y bar okay so i will have into 300 minus y bar divided by i z z which is 53.53 into 10 power 6 mm power 4 this unit is also in mm okay now i, I am interested in finding the maximum load that it can have so the p allowable in compression would be 80 newton per mm square that is mega pascals into 53.53 into 10 power 6 mm power 4 into 3 divided by 300 minus 78.73 which is in mm and length is I assume it to be a 10 meter length beam okay so that will be 10 into 10 power 3 this is L I am assuming that the length of the beam is assume length of beam L to be 10 meters okay assuming the length of the beam to be 10 meters. So, this will give me the compressive load that it can take to be 5.8 kilo Newton okay. Now, similarly I want to find what is the maximum tensile stress that it can withstand sigma x x t max is 40 MPa that will again be PL by 3 which is the maximum bending moment that is coming in the beam into y bar now because I am interested in this stress which is at a distance y bar from because I am interested in this stress which is at a distance y bar from the neutral axis okay. So, I will get it as 5.8 into y bar 
divided by i z z which is 53 which is 53.53 into 10 power 6 okay. So, this will be this will give me p allowable in tension to be 3 into 40 into Newton per mm square into 53.53 into 10 power 6 millimeter power 4 divided by 78.73 which is in mm mm into 10 power 4 which is the length of the beam in mm okay. So, this will evaluate to be 8.16 kilo Newton okay. So, now you have two load estimates one is P allowable in tension to be 8.16 and P allowable in compression to be 5.8. So, which is the load that will allow on the beam? The load that will allow on the beam would be the least of these two, which is 5.8. So, allowable load on the beam is 5.8 kilo newtons. Okay. So, the allowable load on the beam is 5.8 kilo newtons. Okay. So, this is how you solve a beam problem right from the starting to the finding the allowable load and finding the allowable deflections ok. The next class what we will do is we will look at the shear stresses variation in the T section and how do you manufacture the T ok, how do you weld the T to get the appropriate behavior to get integral action of the T action ok, thank you.